Hi, I'm Ted Millich, and I'm excited to tell you about something that I'm passionate about. Non-authoritarian governance. It's called sociocracy, and in my opinion, it's real freedom. In fact, another name for a sociocratic organization is a free organization. And I'll tell you why and explain to you one of the last elements of sociocracy. When Gerard Endenberg developed sociocracy, he used many ideas that other people had come up with. Endenberg had a few sticky situations, though, that required coming up with totally new, totally novel ideas. The first is one of the four main elements of sociocracy, and it's called double linking. I talked about it in my fourth vlog. I've never heard or seen of anyone else coming up with this idea anywhere else. Also, one day, a few years after he had developed most of the processes of sociocracy, Endenberg woke up and realized that he could sell the organization out from under everyone. This did not seem just to him. So he looked at the concept of ownership. Now usually ownership is the basis of control of an organization. You own it, you make the decisions, which makes sense because you don't want anyone else's bad decisions to make you lose a lot of money. But this creates two classes of people, owners and everybody else that works there. Sociocracy can only work if the people using it basically have the same amount of power. That's part of the definition of a dynamic system. So Endenberg asked himself how he could change his system so that it would be egalitarian when it came to ownership. Endenberg considered worker ownership, but worker-owned businesses also frequently hire worker non-owners. So that also allows for two classes. So Endenberg asked, what happens if nobody owns it? If that was the case, then wouldn't the organization own itself? So this is another totally novel idea, self-ownership, and is what this blog entry is about. Gerard Endenberg arranged for Endenberg Electronics to buy itself from him. After many years, it finally completed that process and became the first organization in the world, as far as I know, to own itself. Now, one man can't sell everyone's livelihood out from under them. Woohoo! Endenberg Electronics can be sold only if everyone in the organization consents to it being sold. That's much more just and humane. Like much of sociocracy, self-ownership can be hard to wrap your brain about, around. Now imagine for a moment that there are two corporations. One is owned by shareholders and one owns itself. As I'm sure you know, corporations are legally defined as being people. So picture these two corporations as people. One is owned and one isn't. What do we call a person that's owned? Crikey! That's right! A slave! And what do we call a person who is not owned? Free! So, we call a sociocratic organization a free organization for that reason. The resulting organization that owns itself is not public or private. It's something different. It's not owned by the public, nor is it owned by shareholders. Since we already call sociocratic organizations free organizations, we can now say that there are public private, and free organizations. This has been the second to last in my vlog series called Beyond Democracy, which is about sociocracy. Thanks for tuning in and taking the time to learn how we can change business as usual and self-organize the kind of world we want to live in. And please come back for my next vlog, which is a recap about sociocracy and what the benefits of using it are. Good night, Mike.